every sound from the west of the town. It's the sound of the mighty giant. Feel the ground is shaking. The other teams are quaking in their boots before the giant. We take the longest strides and the highest leap. We're stronger than the rest. We're the greater Western Sydney giants. We're the biggest and the best. And we will never surrender. We'll fight until the end. We're greater than the rest. Well, it's a very good afternoon and welcome to the Gabba Giants fans. We are here live from the Gabba ahead of the Round 11 Clash here with the Lions. We are literally standing in the players' race here at the Gabba whilst Alex Williams is in the comforts of home. Alex, you're joining us down there in Sydney? Yes, I am in the freezing cold comfort of home in Sydney. It doesn't look quite as sunny <laughs> as it does there at the Gabatoire. Yeah, you can see us on the Zoom call there. It's, uh, it is a glorious, glorious Queensland day. And uh, as much as we don't want to talk them up, it is they've really turned it on this afternoon. It is absolutely fantastic. We are well, finally we're here. We must uh, go through that in uh, in due course. But we are finally here, literally set up in about two minutes' time, and uh, we're away with our, our one-eyed giants broadcast live here from the Gabba. We have got uh, a number of uh, people joining us this afternoon. Off the top of my head, Nick Barr will be joining in, coming and uh, talking to us. Uh, we'll be talking to Harry Perryman. He's uh, going to join us as well, and uh, we want you to join us as well. If you are listening to us on Twitter Spaces, you can put that request through, stick your hand up, and we will get you on air we promise this week hopefully technology pending alex how's your That's week been, mate? last week we had a, it's been good mate it's been good nice and cruisy uh, always nice after a win uh to just sort of bask in the glory of of a giant win that was a fantastic win against the eagles i was there last week the crowd was pumping and uh got us got the boys over the line i thought bobby hill really stood up in the big moments and uh kicked a couple of crucial goals and got his head rubbed in the turf um <laughs> you know just 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 in case yeah no it was uh, like in all seriousness it was probably one of the best wins that the club's ever faced in, in certain circumstances we had the injury list we all know about that it's it's long it's getting longer um, it's comprehensive it's com- yeah, it's, it. it covers all boundaries of the uh, of the Giants uh, sort of uh, spectrum but uh, to get up last week was an unbelievable win there and to have crowds in there and then the, the fans were getting behind the boys it was just amazing it was a really good atmosphere there at Giants Stadium it sure was and and another thing that we saw was um, kind of the emergence of Sproul coming through and, and <laughs> Giving some real energy. I mean, I got to. I got to be honest here. I'm a bit. Of, I was a bit of a sprawl doubter. I did not. I wasn't <laughs> sure about this young kid coming through, and uh, he looked like a bit of a goofball. But he bloody delivered, didn't he? I mean, he was he was hard at it, tackling, kicking goals, getting little uh, score assists. He was doing everything. I think we. Uh, I think we said it at one time during the, the game last week amongst ourselves. It was just. It was just Zach Sproul doing Zach Sproul things. It was just a, an amazing effort. We one time he's absolutely in there taking hangers and kicking goals, and uh, other times he might have just been getting in the way of Harry Himmelberg, who was trying to kick a goal. So it was just <laughs> Zach Sproul doing his thing, and he did it so getting well. Getting a falcon as well. I think he, he took an amazing mark, kicked a goal from 50, then next go he falconed himself. What about the one uh, Jacob Beautiful. Hopper just popped through? Uh, at the time, I thought he must have been must have been she- uh, smothered off the uh, off the kick, and it just landed in Sproul's arms. But actually looking back on it, Hopper pulled the kick just enough so that he could just chip it through traffic into Sproul's arms and then we went on and, and kicked a goal from that. It was just an unbelievable afternoon there at Giant Stadium. So as we said, if you are joining us on Twitter Spaces, listening in, Chops is back. Chops is just a, he's just, an, he's just there every week really. And Scotty Patton, he's there as well. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the game last week and also looking forward to this week's game. Uh, we'll uh, have a look. As I said, you would have heard before, it is a glorious day up here at the Gabba. If you are in front of a TV, uh, make sure you get it on at 2 o'clock this afternoon. It's going to be a cracking game. Um, your thoughts on, on this afternoon's Clash, Alex? Yeah, mate, I think it's going to be a, a, a tough clash against uh, the Lions. It's well documented just how well um, they are doing. I think, um, although our midfield has been really rocking lately, so I think, you know, if we can sort of go with them in the midfield and, and we know what our midfield can do, then we give ourselves every chance to, to come out on top. And we've seen our forwards, just, just everyone sort of pitching in with a few goals here. Lloyd's been great, kicking some great goals as well from distance. They know he's a sharpshooter and they get the ball in his hands. I love that. Uh, Bobby Hill could do some damage, but you know, they've got some weapons as well. So I think with a, 
young defensive unit, um, they're clearly working together really strongly. Um, it's it's one of those things where you love to see it with a young group who are who are hunting uh, really well. They're, they're not, you know, just thinking, oh, we're young, we're going to get a bath. Um, they are, they're coming out and they're hunting really hard. I thought Jack Buckley last week was incredible. Yeah, it was really uh, the sort of breakthrough game for Jack back there. He showed what he is capable of doing. And, and we talk about Zach Sproul coming off a rookie list and all that sort of stuff. I mean, the story of Jack Buckley is unbelievable as well. Category B rookie, sort of plucked out of Sydney footy. Was, he'd sort of turned his back on the game a little bit, didn't really, didn't really want to pursue it. Mm-hmm. And he was convinced, played a few games there at the, uh, the University of New South Wales Bulldogs. Uh, got his passion back, and now he's playing in the AFL, and he's a superstar of that back line. Time will tell to see how much of an impact the loss of Sam Taylor will have. Um, but, uh, look, as, as I always say, the good teams, it's one in, one out, and uh, we, we move on. That's exactly right. Now, I've, I've just been alerted that apparently my audio is not coming through Twitter spaces, so I'll let you sort of uh, deal with that while I wax lyrical to maybe <laughs> no one. Um, but yeah, Sam Taylor, I mean, what a performance last week, you know, went down with syndesmosis, um, and obviously, you know, ran out the rest of the game, did some amazing work on, on the bigs, um, last week, Jack Darling and Kennedy alike, uh, Oscar Allen as well. I mean, they, they've got sort of that three headed monster working, um, there. So that, you know, he, he's been week in, week out, one of our best players down back, one of our best players on the field. So to lose him is obviously painful, but you know, someone else gets a chance. I saw, um, I saw last week, Callum Brown, who, who, who is the Medi sub, uh, this week, um, you know, he in the VFL was electric. I was watching, I think I brought it up last week on the show, but he, he was incredible, like fast, strong, uh, good kicking, just just uh, you know, definitely doesn't back down from a, a, a bit of a, a fight and a biff as well. So it's clearly a strong, strong guy, and uh, yeah, no, it'll um, it'll be good to see him out there. Now, apparently, I am coming through Mixer, just not happening on Twitter Spaces. So you know, we'll just have to work We're working through, through that, that at the moment. If, if the people on Twitter, Twitter Spaces have just just heard a, a, a big send a, a period of silence, we apologise for that. We are trying to work it on it. We're literally coming to you live. The first PowerPoint I could find at the Gabba was where we set up and uh, we are less, literally standing in the players' race. At some stage soon, the players will be arriving. They are, t- to go through what, what the players have gone through this, this weekend, it's, it's pretty unbelievable and it's going to be a tough ask for them this afternoon, but we are up for it. We are uh, we were set to fly out yesterday. Um, we were all at the the airport. We were in the Virgin Lounge enjoying a, a nice uh, coffee and such at the Virgin Lounge when the word came through that very nice. We were uh, yeah, unfortunately denied access into Queensland by the Queensland government uh, due to the fact that we played Richmond in Melbourne 13 days ago. So uh, that right. sort of pre- precluded us actually getting into Brisbane. So, unfortunately, we were all sent home. We all slept in our own beds last night. We were back at the airport this morning on a 9 o'clock flight, which was then slightly delayed. Uh, we've come in. The boys have headed off to the airport, just, uh, sorry, to the hotel, just to have a, a light swim, a bit of food, and then they'll be arriving at the ground very, very soon. So, it's been a whirlwind uh, trip up here to Brisbane, but how good would it be to go home with the four points? Now, I'm not saying that the Queensland government is conspiring against us. Like, I'm definitely not saying that the Lions asked them to not let us on that flight. Like, there is no way that I would ever think um, to mention that there's a bit of a conspiracy theory against us here on on the One-Eyed Giants. I'm just saying that there's some videos of there out there of the health minister and the Queensland Lions sort of looking very chummy. I'm just going to say that. So, you know... Do, do with that what you will. <laughs> no, we know that the AFL and the governments have been working overtime to uh, to deal with this. I mean, there's some anomalies in it in that, that we played. The reason we couldn't get in is because we played Richmond in Melbourne last week, um, even due to the fact that Richmond actually played in Brisbane last weekend as well. So it's, it's, it is a minefield, and, and we know there are some smarter people than you and I, Al, that are uh, working through this one. Um, that is very true. Very true. <laughs> but we are we are working through it now. We do have someone on the line. I do believe he's in the room, and he is one of our injured stars at the moment. Um, and he has kindly joined us, Harry Perryman. Uh, turn your mic on. Are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah. G'day, boys. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I can hear, and I can see your lovely face as well, Harry. How you going, mate? Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. Just. 
just in Sydney, actually, just done, done a bit of re this morning, just watching the um, watching the VFL boys having a run around here. So let's talk us through that. So the VFL boys this morning had a, a bit of a run there at uh, Tom Wells Oval, yeah? Yeah, they did. Yeah, I think it's a bit, it was about um, 10 v 10 against the Tigers. So I think it's half time now. So a few of the younger boys are going well. Very, very good. Well, that's an opportunity that we wouldn't have had. Now, Harry, how are you travelling? How's the uh, injury and how's uh, how's the rehab going? Yeah, going pretty well. Um, I think the plan is for uh, to come back after the buy. That's that's the original plan. So, yeah, we've just started doing a fair bit of training now and just starting to yeah, ramp ramp things up a bit. That's good. And uh, so, talk us through. Just a was a just a stock standard hamstring that you grabbed a couple of weeks back. Yeah, just against um, the Tigers. So yeah, just a grade one um, hammy. So yeah, I, I thought I was in a bit of a strife. I was carrying on a bit. Um, I thought I might have done it a bit, <laughs> bit worse than what I thought, but it was only just three, three, four weeks. So I uh, got away pretty lucky. Not too bad. I mean, uh, unfortunately, you didn't get to uh, play in the the beautiful jumper that Bo- the Bobby uh, designed. Did you just uh, did you just nick one of those? Put one of those in the backpack anyway. Yeah, I'll just um, I'll take one of them and get it signed, and um, I'll get a bit of cash for that one. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> now, Harry, you uh, so you you copped the injury a couple of weeks back. Um, what is the process with a hamstring? I mean, you know, Al, I don't know if you've ever done a hamstring. I've never done a hamstring. I, I have no idea what it what it takes. But what what's the process uh, with sort of rehabbing the hamstring? Um, yeah, it's a bit of a oh, it's an annoying one. The old hammy. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how I'll keep doing them. I'm pretty slow, so. <laughs> I don't know how I keep doing a hammy, but um, yeah, the first week's pretty um, cruisy. You kind of just let it heal, and then after that, you kind of you do a lot of testing in the gym and listen to what the physios have to tell you, um, and then kind of just go off how you're feeling out in the track, and they slowly just progress you up and up, and then yeah, until you can yeah, obviously feel it no more. And, and how do you think we're going to uh, travel today, Harry? How do you reckon we're going to go up at the Gabatoir? Um, yeah, I reckon we'll be fine. Um, boys, boys are in good form at the moment. Um, they're all um, having a good, good red-hot crack. A lot of the um, younger boys that have been given their chance, they're all going real good. So I reckon we're in for a good chance. Um, yeah, so it should be good to watch. It feels like the younger guys this year are really slotting into the system and just sort of stepping up. A lot of guys who are, you have been waiting to sort of get their opportunity are, are kind of taking it with two hands. How, how have you seen sort of, especially that young defensive unit coming in and just seem to be just slotting in beautifully? Yeah, it's, it's been bloody good to watch. Um, folks like Jack Buckley, Connor Iden, um, yeah. Cheese, Isaac Cumming, um, they've had to do it the tough way. They've played in the, um, the twos for a fair few years now, so they've had to work their way Worked their way to get a spot in the team, so it's just great to see them. Um, they've obviously stuck around the club for a few years, and now they're getting the rewards. So it's, it's great to see. And what can you tell us about Callum Brown, who's uh, debuting as the medical sub? But he looks like I've been watching a few of the VFL games, and he looks like a very strong unit back there. He's doing some uh, some big intercepting, taking some marks. He's got some dash as well, by the looks of things. Yeah, big brown. He's going well, the big fella. Um, yeah, he's a good athlete. I tell you, he moves that quick. Um, how big he's, is he? Oh, not too sure. He's, I think he's at 190 centimetres and yes, he moves He moves real quick. So, yeah, he's a good athlete and he's been in good form in the VFL. So, it'd be good to see Brownie, Brownie running around. So, and, and yourself, Harry, like when a player goes out and that sort of stuff, I mean, how much do you sort of work together as a backline in the preparation for a game? Do you talk to the guys, work them through, um, or is it just a known system that you guys have got there in the uh, the defensive half? Um, yeah, backline's pretty – I like it down there. It's pretty simple. You kind of uh, <laughs> you kind of just worry about beating your man first and then um, you kind of just go from there. So, I don't know, I like to just keep it pretty simple down there. Um, a lot of the boys do. So, um, yeah, you kind of just work off beating your man first and then – yeah, helping helping out the other boys. Yeah, simple when you do it. Not so simple when <laughs> any of us try and do it. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, I I remember the days of the back line. It was it was one of those things when you you couldn't get a kick. You just go and you know go and make sure your bloke doesn't get a kick. So it, yeah, I, I can <laughs> sort of hearing you. Probably not the same level there, Harry, but uh, you know I can hear where you're coming from. <laughs> So if we look towards the the, uh, the the game this afternoon, Pez, um, 
what what do you see happening? I mean, they are a pretty solid unit, and they've been playing, they're going all right. Six and a trot at the moment as well. So, you know, where where do you think we're going to be looking to uh, try and expose? Yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely a tough task going up there to Brizzy. And <clears throat> they're obviously in good form. Um, I think it'll be yeah, midfield's been in good form, so. Mm. I think if we can get on top in the midfield, um, it goes a long way to winning the game. So if the boys can get to work in there, um, I know they've all been in great form as well. Greeny, Hops, and uh, a few of the boys. So and big, big mummies man the clock back as well. And Flinny's going well in there. So if we can get on top in there, I think it'll go a long way to um, getting the win up there. Hang on the line there. We've got Mitchell who's joined us through Twitter Spaces and hopefully we can hear him this week. We've had some troubles on the Spaces. But, uh, Mitchell, if you're there, give us a shout-out and uh, and go ahead. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yeah, got you comp- loud and clear. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think it's a very, very big game for us. You know, I think almost every game that we've had this season has been relatively season-defining ever since we got our first win on the board. Um, uh, just... Sitting on the sidelines and watching us here, I just feel it's very reminiscent to almost our 2017 and our 2019 runs where, you know, we had plenty of injuries throughout the season, but our young core came together, rebuilt, and I think we're on something special again this year. You know, we've we've made good progress. We're in the eight, and I think we're ready to have a good, good deep run to the finals from what I've seen so far. Yeah, she's really turned around. I mean, we, we had a little bit of a fun during the week having a look back at uh, the, the round two commentary and, Pez, you'd remember the uh, the trip over to Fremantle. It, it wasn't looking real great for us, Pez. And uh, what, what's 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 the feeling like of being able to turn that around from where we were at? Yeah, it's, it's been a good turnaround. Um, remember right, that game against Freo, everyone was um, riding us off. And I don't know, everyone was going pretty early, riding us off. So, um, no, we turned the mound kind of after that round two and... Um, yeah, a lot of the injuries have probably it's probably been a positive in a way. We've had a lot of blokes that have been playing a lot of fo- senior footy where otherwise they might not have played. So yeah, if we can, the depth's obviously there. So a lot of people were doubting that at the start of the year. So we know that's there, and we just got to keep being consistent and um, just keep bringing what we've been bringing the last few weeks. Exactly right. I mean, it's just it, it was fun to just have a look at some two episodes of On the Couch back to back from round two, and then uh, after last week's win, it was a, it was a cracking turnaround as well. And you guys should be congratulated for turning it around so quickly and, and, and so well. So, Harry Perryman, thanks for joining us on the One Eye Giants this afternoon. I know you've got to go and do some rehab and uh, and get uh, get dressed and change. You're sitting there in the change rooms at the moment with your gear on, unless that's you at home on the couch just with all your, your training gear on. I, I can't be sure. Um, I've got to get showered up. I'm actually going back to the farm, the Sarbo, so, um, yeah, better get better get going. Yeah, those cows won't milk themselves, my friend. Harry Perriman, thanks for joining us on One Eye Giants, and uh, good luck. We'll see you after the bye. Yep, thank you. Thanks, boys. Excellent. Yeah, mate. Now, Al, we've got uh, Megan Hustwaite has joined us on Twitter Spaces. Megan, if you can hear us, uh, join in. Uh, let us know what you're thinking. You there, Megan? She's got a microphone on. Definitely got her in as a speaker. Uh, request it again. It'd be good to get Megan in. She's an avid right to get supporter Megan of the Giants. We love that. Just connecting now. Hello. Hey, Megan, you there? <laughs> She's live. Hello from She's lockdown. live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying the show from lockdown in Melbourne, and I... hopefully we have a great game today. What is the feeling down there in Melbourne? We are feeling for our, our brethren down there. What's the feeling uh, as, what, we two, two, three days into lockdown? Yeah, day two, we're pretty miserable. Not going to put a filter on that. <laughs> 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 hey, at least, at least selfishly, it's not like the Giants were playing in Victoria this weekend or yeah. next weekend, so... Yeah. Not missing out on a game. And how good? I mean, I suppose you think about it. You're going into day two and three of, of lockdown. You just got a footy bonanza on. You got you just. Sit, I mean, the old Ko and Fox Footy, you'd be getting an absolute workout down there, wouldn't it? Yeah, getting a workout. And if we win today, that sort tomorrow out or the next few days. <laughs> yeah, the that's exactly right. <laughs> you've got. The, I love it at the moment because you've got sort of NBA finals in the morning, and then you can kind of move on oh. to your football at night. It is a bonanza, and the NBLs. Uh, getting going as well, which is getting into finals. So it's a very exciting time to be a sports fan. It is, especially when there's nothing much else to do. But um, loving the show, guys, and hopefully we have a good performance this afternoon. 
Yeah, we hear you there. Thanks for that, Megan, and appreciate you joining us on Twitter Spaces. If you are listening on Twitter Spaces, feel free to request to join us. And uh, someone's given us a wave there. I don't even know how that really works, but uh, it's as simple as that. Just get the request. We'll get you in. And thanks again, Megan, and uh, go the Giants this afternoon. Go Giants. Yeah, we love it. We love it. And someone else who's joined us now is one of our regulars, Al. She's in the room, I do believe. Uh, a big shout-out there to the northern beaches of Sydney. Nicola Barr, are you there? I am here. Go the Northern Beaches. <laughs> <laughs> no lockdowns in the Northern Beaches this time. This is good. Nah, 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 nah. Never, never in the Northern Beaches. I actually would love a lockdown in the Northern Beaches. I'm not going to lie. Just surf, <laughs> sort of stay at home. That actually sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Don't say that to a Victorian. Do not yeah, say right, that to right. a Victorian. Oh, right. They sorry, will sorry. blow their lid off. <laughs> so you've got to give us a little update. How many snags have you kicked? Snags? None. I haven't played yet. You haven't played? And, um, you... I uh, no. I've been um, I've been injured, so I'm oh, just yeah. That's right, the finger. Yeah, just rehabbing. But finger. I am I am trying to return. <laughs> you did have to throw week. in the little finger there, didn't you, Al? You just had to throw in oh, the little finger. I just finger. need to. Yeah. Well, she did. <laughs> yeah. I did ask on the first one which finger it was because it does matter. And, um, it does. I just need you to. I need it you does. to say it every time. It does matter, and um, I'm not going to lie to you. No, the reason the reason I am not playing yet is because of a few knee issues and, and hamstring stuff, not not because of the finger. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. Oh, there. Good, I'm not that pathetic. Good to share, good to share the injuries pathetic. around a bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just evening them out. Now, Nicola, we've got you here, and what better way to learn a little bit about our potential, and we've got to say potential debutant in Callum Brown this afternoon. He, uh, he played out there at Black Tan with the game that you were calling. Yep. Uh, and yep. just give us uh, your, uh, your view on, on you know, what it was you, th- you saw last week that obviously the coaches saw as well that sees him, you know, he's a medi-sub at the moment. We all hope that he doesn't get on the field, but if he does, what are we expecting? Oh, look, I think Callum Brown has just really stood up in the VFL over the last few weeks. He's obviously moved to more of a key position down back and he's just so calm in terms of how he, you know, is able to take those intercept marks and really set up the Giants, um, I guess, play from the back line. Like, he just is so composed under pressure and, and does look a level above everyone else out there. So, super excited for him. He's very physical out there as well. What I noticed in the VFL, he looked like he mm. was playing sort of at AFL level intensity mm. around everyone yep. else. Like the way yep. he was crashing packs, the way he spoils it. He spoils it. It goes about 30 metres he hits it that <laughs> yeah. hard. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's a serious unit. Like I, I can't yeah. wait. I mean, obviously you'd love for him to come straight into the straight into the lineup, but it is one of those things where, you know, this way, He'll get some experience, shore up the back line if, if we do get an injury, touch wood. Um, but, yeah, no, he looks like he's going to be a serious player and you've got to love the accent. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't know if anyone else knows what's going on out there if he's talking. But, uh, look, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Cora and Zachy are saying to me half the time, if I'm honest, but uh, I don't listen to them anyway. So, you know. <laughs> to me, probably. Um, Hey, just on no, Cora. No, hey, just think, just on Cora, Nicola. Did yeah, you see Dustin yeah. Martin requested a photo with her on uh, a training? Oh, I know, I know. She was exhausted. I saw her this morning. Trained with her this morning, and um, she was a little bit exhausted from yeah, just Dusty constantly asking her for photos. Um, <laughs> no, actually, what I've realised is Cora is a massive groupie. Oh, we, is that right? We were, we were yeah, huge groupie. Loves Dusty. Can't get enough. And um, I think she was getting some goal kicking tips from Toby Green this morning as well. Oh, geez, she's, she's doing all right at the moment, I reckon. I mean, she's going to be a force to be reckoned. Anyways, getting back to what were we talking about? I can't remember what we were talking about. I just... We're talking about Callum Brown. Oh, there we Callum go. Callum Brown. Now, if, if Giants fans, if you hadn't had a chance, jump on the website and check out the uh, the video that's been put up uh, on the website there of Callum Brown with some great footage um, that we unearthed from back in 2017 when, uh, when Heath Shaw was uh, over in, in, in Derry. Uh, with Nick Walsh and uh, uncover this young superstar that in the making, Callum Brown. It is a fabulous uh, little uh, video there to, to learn where he's come from and you know, what he's been up against to make it to this level. So if you, if you get a chance, jump there. I, I must admit, though, when I was, we were putting that together, and we normally do put subtitles on a lot of our videos just for, you know, for people to watch on, you know, on their phones and such, but it really was necessary on that one. It was, uh, it was, it was hard at times. <laughs> It's an interesting one with the Gaelic stars, the way that they, you know, you saw his family and friends sort of saying, you know, are you getting a game yet? Are you getting a game yet? He's like, 
you, you try it. It's really hard. Like <laughs> daily football it. is is tough in its own right. Don't get me wrong. But imagine switching codes at seventeen. You know, going for what two and a half years, and then and then people kind of constantly pressuring you. I guess because they can't see you day in day out. You know how hard it is um, to get a game. But then, like, just having that little thing, it seems like he's driven. It seems like he he really wants to make it at the elite level. So I just think it, I, I love that from the family going, when are you, when you getting a game, mate? You know, <laughs> do, I think in Gaelic you can only play for your county. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You've got to stick to your county, yep. Yeah, so if you're from a place that has heaps and heaps of people, usually those teams are very good. And if you're from a smaller place, you know, uh, not so much. So... It's an interesting. It's an interesting. It was interesting, and one thing we also got to work through is we've got to explain the emergency setup to uh, to Callum's mum because apparently she's uh, she just trawls the internet. And when as soon as he was a named emergency, which as we all know, there's no guarantees as an emergency that you're even going to be on the plane. It's sort of sometimes you put in there, especially now with the squads coming out on a Thursday. But apparently, mum read the uh, team list, saw his name in the emergency list, and just assumed he was playing. So when we when we tried to do the uh, the, the reveal phone call to his mum all the way back there in Ireland with the time differences and everything she was like yeah oh, you're in yeah good well done congratulations it's like how did, how did you know <laughs> not quite the, the shock video that we had with Tanner and stuff like that no no and nowhere near the uh, screaming and, and swearing that he predicted when he when we were talking to him beforehand so that was well, probably probably a good thing probably, you know, <laughs> although who would know I mean <laughs> sometimes with the, the accent you wouldn't know what they're saying you can't but, understand no, no. I reckon Cora and Snaggy say lots of bad things, but I just can't understand them, so I just let it go out of my head. Very good. Now, what's on this afternoon for you, Nicola? Are you uh, coaching, commentating, uh, playing? What's what's on the cards? Mate, I don't even know. I can't keep up. No, I'm joking. I am uh, coaching the Bombers at the moment, the North Shore Bombers. Um, very exciting. We are up against Inner West today, so playing the likes of Rebecca Privatelli, Emily Ooh. Pease, Erin Todd, um, I'm just runner for the Bombers today. So, look, I, I'm not technically playing, but if I if I get in the area with them, I might just, you know, <laughs> throw on the tackle. Oh, on the side. Jump on someone's the... back. And... <laughs> we well, before you go, Nicola, we'll, uh, we'll get your prediction for this afternoon uh, with the uh, the Giants taking on the Lions up here at the Gabba. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Oh, it's look, it's going to be going to be a tough game. Obviously, the Lions had a big win last week. Um, I know the Giants did as well, but, Lions are a pretty strong side, but of course I'm going to back the Giants. I always do, not quite by a hundred points like Alex, but um, <laughs> I might go. I might go Giants by eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. A comfortable yeah. eighteen or a, or a kick a away at the end. 18. Comfortable. I like the comfortable nah, ones. Uh, comfortable eighteen. Even last week, it was it was you know in the end it was a good win, but it, they just didn't get it done until right that last minute, which always is, yeah. as, a, as yeah. a viewer, just get it done, boys. <laughs> Oh, that's good. All right, well, Nicola, thanks again for joining us on the One Eyed Giants. Uh, you're, you're a star and also um, you know, in the local leagues, but we can't wait to see you starting in December. We didn't even touch on yeah, that. We've got the, I know. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit nervous. Preseason the, starts in three months. Th- <laughs> get the sunscreen out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But it's no, it's going to be exciting. hot. That is gonna, it it's is, just it going to be a whole, be new, whole new era for uh, AFLW, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting though. I think it's um it's going to be great to have, I guess, our own space and not overlapping with the men's at all. Um, I think it's a great opportunity, and you know, who who cares? Just throw us into the heat. We love it. Oh, exactly. Throw us yeah, and just stick us down in Albury as well, like in the the yeah. super heat. You know, we'll yeah, playing them. Perfect, perfect. Nah, it'll be great, and uh, and it was good. We're starting to see Al McConnell floating around the club a little bit more, getting a little bit nervous. Obviously, the the draft coming up. I think next week yep. is it. Yeah, it is. Uh, is it next week? Um, actually, I should I should know that, and I don't. It may um, it may no, even Al's, be affected. Al's always on the lookout. Yeah, it may be yeah, affected yeah, as yeah. well with everything going down in Melbourne. So that's true. Yep. Uh, it's yep. just to watch this space thing with much most of the things at the moment. So, but yeah, it's yep. all going to be. Uh, we're, we're inching closer, Al. We're inching closer to twelve months of the year football. So it it, it can't be a bad thing. No, not at all. Don't think so. Excellent. All right, well, Nicola, I know you've got a busy afternoon going on. Thanks for joining us here on the One-Eyed Giants. It's been a pleasure speaking to you again. And uh, go the Bombers. Go the Bombers. Go the Giants. No, I love being on here, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a good afternoon. There she is, superstar of the Giants AFLW side, Nicola Barr, and uh, good to hear from her down at the local footy ground. And uh, it's uh, wonderful to hear her thoughts and uh, can't wait to see that, that competition starting up again in December. 
Yeah, it's really exciting that it's coming up in December. I think having uh, that free air is going to really kind of, you know, just give people, I just, you know, AFL all year round. I mean, I don't think <laughs> I'm going to get sick of it. I just don't think I am. You know, you go, oh, you know, it's nice to have a break. I think my girlfriend might be annoyed. Yeah, yeah, but well, that, that, that won't be a problem after a couple of weeks because, you know, a couple of weeks sitting on the couch watching 12 months of football, the, the, the girlfriend won't be an issue. They, they... Well, <laughs> very, very, very kind of you to say so. <laughs> Uh, now on the One Eye Giants, we have got a very special guest who's just joined us as well, and someone that uh, the avid Giants fans will remember from the inaugural season of the AFLW uh, competition. Uh, uh, a lady who played in that uh, first year football for the Giants, Cody Briggs, has joined us all the way from Perth. Cody, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Thanks for having me, guys. Excellent. It's great to hear your voice, and uh, welcome to the One Eye Giants. Um, where, where are we hearing you from? Whereabouts in Perth or, or WA are you calling from? I'm currently calling from my workplace, uh, a grain bakery in WA. You'd be, you'd be just be uh, right in the thick of it at the moment in the bakery there, wouldn't you? What's what time we got? Oh, no, you'd be just ending your shift, wouldn't you? Well, I've got a couple of hours left, just in the middle of it. But uh, I was happy they were happy to let me put a couple uh, minutes aside to jump on you with you guys. What's on what the uh, in the middle of? Uh, yeah, what's on what's on the tray? What's on the baking tray? Well, at I've the been uh, baking a bit of sourdough, uh, oh, yeah. croissants mainly. I was in the oh. middle of folding some croissants. I did it pretty good here. It's, it's good. It's a good feed. <laughs> so, which bakery was it again? Can you give us a plug? Because I'm yeah. like I'm a, I'm a West Australian. I'm going straight there when I get oh, there. Oh, absolutely! It's uh, so we're called uh, Grain Bakery WA. Um, this just, just opened up a couple of weeks ago, like about two months ago now. So, um, yeah, it's doing really well. It's right next to actually where the West Coast Eagles train. Oh, so, amazing. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's doing really well. I'm happy to be a part of the team. Yeah, excellent. Now, any chance we can sort of, you know, work with you when we're over there next to the West Coast, maybe to, you know, a, bit, a little bit of extra sour in the sourdough just to make sure the boys get... <laughs> I reckon something can be sorted, absolutely. <laughs> now That's we what we want on this show, on the one We're talking about poisoning opposition teams. I mean, that's about as one eye. <laughs> now, as much as some players over here. As much that's as we, we as much as we could talk bakery all afternoon, and I'm sure we could, uh, the reason we've got you on, Cody, is, is a really special one because um, if we go back to the first uh, AFL Indigenous AFLW Indigenous jump. But you had a big hand in designing that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, I was lucky enough to get the opportunity uh, working alongside um, Leanne Hunter. Uh, you know, we went over the Zoom call and all that type of stuff and, uh, you know, sorted together what we wanted the uh, jersey to represent. Um, you know, being the very first one, it was uh, the main focus was around, like, just bringing the community together. You know, all the different families, the staff members, past players, players, the fans, um, from everyone from different, uh, you know, backgrounds. We just wanted to make sure that everyone was inclusive, especially in the very first one. Yeah, and it was a cracking design. And I know, I remember, the, the girls were so proud to be wearing it as well. So it must have been a really yeah. a really proud moment for yourself. Oh, definitely. Um, like on the jersey there, um, uh, it has my totem, which is the emu. So um, that's a very personal touch uh, that's been involved. Um, before the girls got to uh, run out for their AFLW Indigenous round, I was actually lucky enough to speak to them. Uh, on the way, you know, when they were at the airport and uh, explained my background story behind that symbolism. And like you said, it's just a, it was a really good opportunity to be a part of and to, to tell my story in that sense to the girls. Yeah, it was it was amazing. And, and I know you, you, you really went above and beyond talking to the girls this year as they went out for their, their jumper. And, and uh, we really appreciate that. It was a, a, from all reports that the girls just absolutely loved it. Yeah. Again, something really, really I was really proud to be a part of. Something I still, you know, proud to be a part of now. Yeah, and, and, and if we think about it, I mean, we, we, it was, I mean, you guys were pioneers back then, that first season of, of AFLW. I mean, it wasn't a lot it wasn't a lot that we knew what was going on at the time, and, 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 and you just jumped in and, and you know, um, yourself, I mean, the, the whole squad trained as hard as you could, you could imagine, and um, yeah, it must be really good to be able to look back on that time that you spent over here at the Giants. Absolutely. Like, like, like you said, the first year was, uh, you didn't know what exactly what was coming. Um, there's a lot of girls like such as myself who were working two, two, pretty much two full time jobs. Um, but the thing about the giants and, uh, the girls and the team and what they continue to do is like everyone just backs it, like backs each other up. Everyone makes sure they're there to support each other. Um, you know, the girls back then and now, like I said, it's just a, a good sense of like, you know, coming together. And, um, again, that's what we wanted to sort of pull across in the Jersey this year. Excellent, excellent. And yourself, you you still playing? 
Uh, no, I'm actually, uh, it, it was a bit difficult for me with my pastry job. Like I did have to start at early hours. I did stuff up training at night and games on the weekend, but I definitely am looking to get back into it now that I've settled, settled over here in WA. Yeah, yeah. What, what's, the local, what's the local club? Who, who would be your choice? Or you just go for the highest bidder, wouldn't, wouldn't you, Cody? Oh, I'm going to suss out a couple of places, really. I'm going to get some insight. I might have to ask um, Matty Collier for a bit of advice or, you know, Emma Swanee. Oh, that's right, right yeah. And the Giants. Just, so yeah. uh, I'll, see, uh, I'll see what they say, but, uh, you know, you've got to suss out. Who <laughs> wears orange, basically? Who wears orange? <laughs> who did? Who, who can talk to me? Who knows my game? All that type of Ex- stuff. Exactly. Give you, myself a little bit of a hand. You, uh, you mentioned <laughs> Maddie and, and Emma. Do you, do you still catch up with the girls much? Or do you, you know, do you still chat on the, on the WhatsApps and all that sort of stuff? Uh, you know, the girls are, like, uh, 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 privy. Privy Tally, like, I, you know, keep in contact with her now and then. She, she was my old housemate as well, so... There are definitely a couple of girls in the team that are, you know, have a good chat. Like, um, you know, uh, Eva, obviously captain. She, I've worked with her previously too, so she was um, staying in contact with me during the whole process. Um, but the girls are lovely. Like, they're always so welcoming. Um, you know, the invite's always there when I'm in Sydney. I just got to WA first before I could get that chance. But um, <laughs> yeah. I know, you know, the girls are always there to back here. Excellent. And uh, as we hit into uh, Sir Doug Nichols' round this this uh, this weekend or these next couple of weekends, um, you know, as a as a I suppose put yourselves in a in a in a spectator mode, um, it must be just a, a wonderful feeling and, and 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 experience for you guys to, you know, to to experience the the beautiful jumper designs and and the absolute brilliance that the Indigenous players put on for the AFL and the AFLW. Exactly like you said, like Sir Doug Nichols, like for me personally too, looking on this round, he um. My grandmother and my great-grandmother worked alongside him for uh, fighting for Indigenous rights in Victoria. So first and foremost, when I see Sir Doug Nichols, that's a personal thing for me and, you know, my family, both on my mother and my father's side, to uh, have a look at. Um, We also talk about the the round. It's in Reconciliation Week. Um, You know, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on this week too. You know, it's a good time for everyone to reflect on um, what's happened in the past and, like, you know, create ways to move forward and everything. Like that. Um, again, personally, to me, I've got uh, you, the the football this year was designed by Ree Lotter. I played against her. I did uh, coaching alongside her for the under 15s Indigenous women's team. Um, so yeah, she's designed the football uh, football this year, and I think this is the second time they've used it. If I'm you know if I'm right, but um, yeah, there's so much attached to just this round and this week individually for myself. Yeah. So it's a big celebration and something I'm really really proud to be a part of now. And one one of the great things that, that that comes out of it, and is all it's all linked as well, is we've had a couple of great ceremonies and such at the footy club this week, with uh, with Bobby Hill and, and Jeremy Finlayson on on uh, yeah. on that day, and then of course the netball girls are also wearing the indigenous dress, uh, the Giants netball team. So um, we've had a couple of smoking ceremonies and that sort of stuff, and and, it, and just that opportunity to, to sit back and listen and and to hear a story. And, and Jeremy Finlayson, a wonderful story with his uh, link mm. through to Sir Doug Nichols as well. Yeah. Like you said, it's a good time for everyone to just reflect and um, have a look and it's, it's togetherness. It's a celebration of um, Indigenous people and, um, you know, everything, like, like you said, like this week being reconciliation is like sorry day. Everyone has a reflection on that and um, the anniversary of the referendum. Um, but it's good to see that everyone, like you said, smoking ceremonies and it just being celebrated. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, 100%. And uh, are you still you still still follow the Giants, Cody? Are you, are you did the did the orange flow into the bloodstream? Absolutely, I can't like ever since I did play for Giants, I can't help but not you know. Uh, I, I even drifted away from you know West Coast Eagles, being that my uncle played for them. Yes. David Will Punder. got another one. But uh, I know, but coming back to <laughs> WA, you know, just appreciate AFL in general and AFLW, and uh, you know, personal connections with everyone. You can't help but. You know, you go for the Giants girls and all that, and especially the men too. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And uh, so we'll get before we let you go, we'll get your uh, your prediction for this afternoon. We are the one-eyed Giants, so you you don't have to go that way. You can be a little bit measured and a little bit, uh, you know, think about it as well. But uh, how much will the Giants win by this afternoon by your standards, Cody? Oh, <laughs> I reckon. Okay, obviously they're going to win. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a hundred percent. I mean, you, you want to play a, you want a good, good close game, so I reckon about like two goals. Give it that. Two, two goals. goals. Jesus, we'll take that. Yeah, we'll take. Well, I'll take a point, but you know, we'll take two goals. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's a, a, 
Excellent. And Cody, just once again, thanks for joining us on the One of Giants here. A wonderful part of the story that's been written in uh, the Giants uh, space, uh, not only AFLW, but that connection with the, with the girls and, and the designing of the jumper as such has been wonderful. And, and as we always say, once a giant, always a giant. So uh, we, we, we do thank you for joining us and, and good luck with, uh, with, the, with the pastries and the, and the sourdough. It's, it sounds fantastic. It does. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate being a part of it. This, Thanks, Cody. There she is, Cody That's Breeze, an inaugural AFLW player with the Giants and, uh, as, as I said, had a hand in the uh, the first ever Indigenous jumper that the girls wore uh, in the AFLW. Um, it was a wonderful and, and made herself available to the girls. It was unbelievable. So really great to catch up with Cody. As I said, once a giant, always a giant, and uh, always good to catch up with the, uh, with the old family. Now, Al... Let's turn ourselves to the, the game this afternoon. Let's get down and dirty. Uh, what do you, what's your view? What's going to be happening this afternoon? Mate, I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm looking forward to the broadcast, knowing the difference between Tom Green and Jacob Hopper. That seems <laughs> to be a, a really tough thing that they don't seem to be able to handle. I think one of them needs to get some sort of like, you know, crazy haircut or just some, some sort of design, maybe a little celebration uh, going on because at the moment they don't seem to be able to tell the difference uh, between the two on the broadcast. But no, look, I think uh, it's going to be a tough game for sure. Like we 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 we're one eyed, but we understand that that the, the, they're going very well at the moment. Not that they can't be beaten though. And we we've got a tough team. We've got a lot of people who can get on the scoreboard. A lot of midfielders who can get on the scoreboard. I think Josh Kelly's just been in incredible form. So look, I'm going to say we get up. Let me see. Um, I'm going to go 100. <laughs> there it is. Uh, very good. Now, before we get too far in it, we've got to another one joining us via Twitter Spaces. Matthew Lodge has jumped on. Matthew, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me, guys? We can hear you loud and we clear. We can hear you. Thanks for joining us on the One-Eyed Giants. Uh, what's, what's, what's happening in the Matthew Lodge world? Uh, well, uh, I'm a bit like Megan was before. I'm uh, down here in Melbourne in lockdown season at the moment. Uh, currently, uh, I've mentioned, I think Alex brought it up before, there's plenty of sport on at the moment. So I've got the, the four screens happening between two games of NBA, <laughs> uh, oh, the wow. pre-game and, uh, and some Caulfield racing at the moment. And there's probably going to be a few more... Uh, few more sports rotating through the screens later on today, I suspect. I think they'll run out of a toilet paper like they always do in lockdown, but they might <laughs> run out of AA batteries from the remote controls just getting an absolute pounding. <laughs> correct, correct. And so, Matthew, give us your story. What, what's, what brings you to the One-Eyed Giants space? Oh, look, very, very, very passionate and very much a One-Eyed Giants, Giants man myself. Um, and very much looking oh, forward to today's, today's game as well too, boys. It's probably, uh, probably one that maybe... Uh, Maybe not as not as confident on it as, as previous weeks, um, just given given what, what the the lines are bringing to the table. But um, you, n- you never know. Footy's a, footy's a funny game, and uh, so. But uh, I'd be putting the question to you boys. Do you reckon? And apologies if you covered this earlier in the in the in the chat. But do we do we reckon that uh, we'll see one of our, our three forwards in in, in Finlayson, and Riccardi and Himmelberg move back, or do or do we or do we try and sort of back in our our Albeit a little bit depleted, back six or seven to one um, to tackle the, uh, the the giants of um, or the the, the tools of Brisbane's forward line. Yeah, it's an interesting with, one with that because Riccardi's been playing sort of a wing role, so he's not playing that full forward run, you know, uh, role recently. We did see him play back in the VFL. We know Himmelberg can do it, but I just don't see us taking out one of those pins in Himmelberg or or uh, Finlayson in that forward line. They're just too dangerous. Sproul obviously has a big tank, can run all day, but he, he showed that he was putting a lot of pressure on. So you kind of think that you'd move Riccardi in as that intercept defender, but with Haynes back, it's sort of playing a similar role. So you don't have that guy who's like that one-on-one big defender. So it's it's an interesting one. I think, look, I think they're pretty happy with what Iden's work is doing back there in Buckley. Obviously, we're giving up some size. I think, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. I, you know, I think that Finlayson's probably the option just because he's such a good kick as well, um, exiting mm. back 50. But but you take him out of the forward line, and I'm not sure we want to do that. Yeah, well, the other option you've got there, no. and something you probably will see this afternoon, is Sam Reid will we'll swing back into that sort of backline role as well. But, yeah, you do have options. We did speak to Stevie Jay, the forwards coach, during the week, and asked him if he'd be happy for one of his forwards to go back. He was adamant that they didn't need him. 
He needs him up there in the forward line. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> be interesting to see how it plays out. What are your well, thoughts? That young, that young back line has been, has been hunting and doing really well lately. So, I mean, until that kind of fails, you, you've got to kind of give it a, keep giving it a go, right? Yeah. Well, how do Agreed. you see it? Who, who would you like back? I uh, agree. Yeah, I, I think it's a really tough one, Les, because I, I think sort of looking at the uh, the matchups and, and what sort of Brisbane's front six kind of kind of uh, brings to the table. You've obviously got McStay, Danaher, and and Hipwood up there. So it's um and it's probably going to be a matter of you know we're, we're probably used to seeing a type like like Hainsey, um, you know, replicate his twenty twenty form and and be that mm. intercepting intercepting uh, uh, defender. But I, I wonder if he's going to have to really sort of you know sacrifice his game. Um, same with Bunce down there and, and really locked yeah. down and, and maybe it's it's a matter of um, you know the the the, uh, the the Cummings and the Ashes of the world uh, playing that sort of slightly more aggressive role to, to give us our um, our line and, and I wonder if someone like Iden who um, who I thought did a you know did a, did an amazing job on uh, on flying Liam Ryan last week uh, whether he looks at, at someone like a, like a Charlie Cameron um, as as opposed to potentially one of the bigs as well but um, I agree with you Alex I, I, yeah I. I yeah, you're right on Ricker. He's, he's certainly been playing that sort of that defensive wing role. So he's, he's it's probably you know um, again yeah. a bit of a, a sacrificial role for him. So potentially you swing him back. But uh, I was actually probably thinking that it might be Himmelberg. Might be the might be the latest. So well, I, I well think Harry does. Harry would. Pro- yeah, he's got form in that, and, and they do tend to try and, you know, at the sort of back end of quarters, they'll, they'll swing Harry back there, and he'll play that sort of that lock roll down there. So, you know, maybe it is, but oh, it's going to be a tough one because, you know, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. I mean, Harry, Correct. whilst he hasn't been hitting the scoreboard as much, his, his work rate, his effort in that forward line and, and being able to st- support the, the guys around him has been fantastic the last couple of weeks. I don't Agreed. mind Haynes Agreed. back one on one as that key defender, and then maybe you roll Ricker in, kind of playing that intercept marker. I mean, he did do uh, he was kind of man on man with Kennedy uh, last week at times. Um, obviously, you would prefer him kind of floating across packs and 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 sort of taking intercept marks, but you know we're running out of bigs back there, so you do need to kind of. He's still a great one on one defender, so. Maybe he goes to that role. They're, they're quite a tall forward line, so we do need to kind of make sure that we uh, honour that. Um, so, yeah, it should be a good game. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting one. I also think that Himmelberg, I'm, I'm reticent to put him into the back line because I I know that he's just about to kick a bag. You know, like he's, <laughs> he's been kind of missed. He's been there about, but that's what he does. He's sort of a little bit. And then he's going to come out and have an absolute, like he's going to take the world on fire get the world on fire, I should say, one week. So I kind of don't want to push him back because I know what he can do up forward. And this is the beauty of Twitter spaces. Mitchie's jumped back in. He's obviously got something to add. Mitchie, turn your uh, microphone on there and let us know. What, what's your thoughts on, on how they're going to uh, combat the Brisbane forward line? I think the structure is going to be it's going to be very tough today. Um, as you said, Abbas, you know, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul in terms of taking away our balls the forward line. What I wanted to add was just on the mention of Connor Dunn. Um, I think every week he's playing a career best game. Um, our, our, our back line has evolved since the loss of Phil. You know, Nick Haynes going down with injury. Now Sam Taylor down. I think it's, you know, it's a testament to our depth again. But Connor Dunn, um, Jack Buckley, the way they stood up. Um, I've seen some chat, you know, across social media from a few pundits in the media industry as well, how our young back line, they've stepped up massively and I just have to just give some credit to Connor in that sense about how he's been able to step up into almost becoming one of our key backs um, as someone who really doesn't have the size to play a key back. But, you know, I, I see him taking one of the three tall down back today and I think he, you know, if he plays on Danaher, I wouldn't be surprised if Danaher leaves without a bag today. Yeah, well, that's... He's pretty electric in the air as well. Like, he gets up. Like he spoils doesn't mind a jump, yeah. Doesn't mind a bit of, bit of air time. I think I've seen some uh, some videos that the Giants released of him absolutely throwing down some dunks as well. So uh, you can get up, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that well, him? It's yeah, yeah, because it it makes the the dreads when they fly in that that upper atmosphere. It really gives them the nice glow as well. So <laughs> that's it. That's it. There's a big aerodynamic. Jack, the big Jack Buckley walks past me here. We are standing here in the uh, in the race here at the Gabba Broadcasting Live. So we're right in the thick of it at the moment. Tommy Green warming up on the uh, boundary line. We are getting closer to game time. Of course, a two o'clock game this afternoon. Uh, make sure you are on the telly. If you're not in Brisbane, if you're allowed into Brisbane, because let's face it, it was very hard to get into Brisbane today. There's the big Jace McCartney walks past me here as well. He's got nothing to add, just just, just sort of walks past and 
We will broadcast it's from anywhere, Jason. The weather's good. Weather's good. Fantastic conditions. Good to be here. We can't wait to get stuck into this mob. <laughs> Jason's had a big couple of days. I love that. I love that. <laughs> just, just negotiating with the AFL, with the Queensland government. He, he, along with Stephen Doyle, basically they've done already done four to eight quarters of football equivalents on the phones <laughs> and on the texts and on the Zoom. So a big shout out to those guys. They've done an amazing job, and it's not even over yet. We've still got some restrictions. Apparently, there's there's talk that some of the boys who are staying in Brisbane this weekend literally after the game have to drive to Tweed Heads and then come back into Queensland at midnight because midnight is <laughs> midnight is the 14 days since we played in Melbourne so we need to leave Brisbane they're still negotiating and and I can understand there's a lot going on but the the, the thought is that they need to leave Queensland until midnight tonight so after the so, go so let me just get this straight like I, it's all good but I'm guessing every player has had a negative test result. Yeah, yeah. We, all, we all tested negative uh, yesterday morning in, in preparation for the supposed flight yesterday afternoon. Okay, so as I said earlier, I'm not saying that there's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not saying that. No, I, you know, look, we do have to be as careful as possible. But, um, yeah, wow. So they, they'd have to leave and then drive back in. That makes sense. At midnight, no yeah. Sense. So it's, it's look, if, it, if that's the regulations, I'm sure the boys will be happy to, to abide by it. But uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a strange and wonderful space to be in and, and we do shout out to all those people who are listening to us down there in Melbourne we know we've got a lot of uh, fans down there in Melbourne who are in lockdown at the moment so a big shout Melbourne out to you Giants. guys and uh, and you know just know that we're thinking of you but uh, I reckon there'll be a, a few beers on at the Tweed Heads, uh, Tweed Heads Bowling Club tonight if the boys get there just before <laughs> if me if the tonight. boys get up by the one point <laughs> I'll be feeling it alright well yes, we, might, hope, we might start to wrap this one up as the big Flynn walks past me here in the race at the Gabba we might start to wrap this one up. Uh, uh, I don't know if I gave my prediction. I don't care how much we win by today. I, I just, if we get the win, this could be just, just a springboard for the rest of the season. I really, we go into the bye. I mean, you know, it's going to be a tough game, and we know that the uh, the challenge is ahead of us. But uh, the boys are up for it. There's a, the uh, contingent of well, assistant coaches maybe. Like they just sort of wander around looking, looking important. Stevie J here <laughs> as well. Anyway, so as I said, a win. It was a win. Any mar- any margin will do me this afternoon as we see a couple of Giants fans coming into the Gabba early as well. Good hey, to see. There it is. Good to see. So love uh, that. Once again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, apologies for the technical stuff at the start on that Twitter space. As you can listen to the podcast back um, uh, after the uh, the broadcast as well, if you're that way inclined. It's going to be a wonderful afternoon here, Gab. Al, thanks for joining us again on the One Eye Giants. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Have an absolute ripper day, Khan the Giants. Khan the Giants. Thanks, Abbas. Thanks, boys. Thanks, mate. Well, there's a big, big sound from the west of the town. It's the sound of the mighty giants. You feel the ground is shaking. The other teams are quaking in their boots before the giants. We take the longest strides and the highest leap. 